incredible kinetic installations from David Bowen and live jazz. Your playlist is next. Funding for the playlist is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Rhythm, timing, and training. Our guests tonight have their musical bases covered. They're freelance jazz musicians playing tonight as the Randy Lee Ensemble.
we will we'll meet the musicians and hear some more jazz later in the show. So stay tuned after this. Film has just, uh, it just has a unique appeal and it has for over 100 years and there's no fear of it going away. The film festival idea in a nutshell is that uh, you bring in a lot of directors and writers and producers and if you look at our schedule, about 75% of the films have either writer, director, actor, producer uh, attending uh, this year, which is the highest number that we've ever had. A film called Northern Light, which is um, shot in uh, the UP, uh, follows a family around who are very involved in a snowmobile race. So the snowmobiling, the race itself, has, uh, has a large character within the film as well. Hide Your Smiling Face is easily one of my favorite films that I've seen in the past, I don't know, five, ten years. It's just something that, that really moved me on a personal level and uh, I just really identified with the characters. The Price of Sand is something that I'm also excited to see. This is the frack mining documentary, so obviously a very pretty hot topic. Wow. The last Gladiators, their opening night film, will obviously be a crowd favorite. That's uh, stand up and cheer and laugh out loud and real gut punch, so to speak. Uh, there is a lot of punching in that movie, so uh, it is an uh, R-rated film. So um, all the hockey parents, just get a babysitter and come on out and enjoy that one. The Duluth Superior Film Festival starts May 29th and runs through uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Go to www.ds-ff.com. Well, I think you'll like the gentleman in our next story. He translates natural elements into moving pieces of art. David Bowen's kinetic installations explore the intersection between nature and technology. The UMD art instructor has a following all around the world. I like the pink, it's a very artificial color, it sets up kind of a, a contrast between the organic movement. My name is David Bowen and I'm a kinetic sculpture. I make uh, kinetic, robotic and uh, interactive and reactive sculptures. This is underwater. This was commissioned for this uh, uh, interior Biennale in Kortrijk, Belgium. It's, it's really easy for people to just come in and enjoy it. I mean, it, as complex as it is, people just walk in, sit down, and they get it. And it's, it's that easy. I used a Microsoft Connect positioned over a boom over the water on Lake Superior. And I recorded that data for about an hour. And Taking that data and then uh, scaling it, cutting it back quite a bit, this is 729 motors. And so essentially what those are doing are undulating based on that data, recreating the, the surface of the water, the movement from the surface of the water. I had a piece at the uh, Prove Gallery. It's a s installation piece called Telepresent Water. It is actually the data that was recorded during a ferry trip across Lake Superior and transmitted into 15 different points which control 15 different motors which translate into this grid. So it's a very kind of collision of mechanical and organic. Um, it's an installation that really can bring art to the forefront for people that maybe need something more visual that way. There's always this nice tension between um, uh, technology that seems so cold and rigid with um, things like waves, water, motion that kind of surpass that rigidity. You know, I hope maybe uh, some people are able to read into our relationship between uh, nature and machines and, and how the two interact with each other too. So I hope it can be uh, read or, or appreciated in a variety of different ways. It could be as easy as you want it to be, or it could be as complex as you want it to be. It's a bunch of levels of illusion, and that is something I find very interesting.
For the latest arts news, you can check out the Playlist website. That's theplaylistonline.org. And once you're there, you're always welcome to watch clips and to make suggestions. Now, to see what we're working on, put us in your news feed on Facebook and follow along on Twitter. Now, in our gallery tonight, the fanciful work of Liz Sievertson and Lenore Lampy, both compliments of CV's Art Gallery of Duluth. Liz's painting, After Hours, honors our mighty native pines, while Lenny's ceramic work mimics the birch that populate the region. Both artists have work in the CV's Gallery in Duluth Canal Park. And now, please welcome back the Randy Lee Ensemble.
It is beautiful. Thank you. That's an absolute treat to have here. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Randy Lee, will you please introduce your bandmates here? These wonderful guys. This is Eric Pollard on the drums. We have Matt Mobley on the bass and Ryan Frayne on the piano. Welcome to Thank all of you. Now, you guys are independent <laughs> musicians, but you also play in small groups together and bigger ones. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, we, uh, Ryan and I teach, and everybody's got a variety of things they do. Um, freelance musicians, I guess, is the best way to say it. Some long-running gigs. Um, Matt's involved with a bunch of bands around town, and Eric's got other projects, too. But um, I do everything from getting hired for a wedding to play a solo saxophone part to Dixieland duos and trios and big band, whatever the function is. It's usually based around jazz, which would be swing and Dixie and all the styles within jazz. We're going to bring Ryan into this conversation because Ryan also is one of those composers, which I think is pretty interesting. Now, the last piece, A Gift, was composed by you, but the first piece, Ryan, that was yours. That's right. Uh, Licorice is actually a tune that's um, going to be featured on an upcoming album that I'm going to finish mixing in Colorado in about two weeks. Um, and it'll be uh, featuring all original tunes in one standard called Alone Together. And uh, Licorice, actually the title of that tune is uh, something that came from our uh, three-year-old, Nicholas. And um, before our uh, current five-month-old was born, um, we had asked Nick what uh, he thought we should name him. And he said, well, how about Licorice? <laughs> so that's where the title came from. He didn't write the tune, but you know. <laughs> Are there like building blocks in a jazz tune that you use? That are there kind of standard pieces? Absolutely. I think um, just like any composer, we think quite a bit about form. Uh, we think quite a bit about harmony, and we think quite a bit about melody. Um, the difference that might be uh, in what we do, as opposed to say a classical uh, composer or maybe a pop composer, uh, would simply be the style that we use to write the tune. So we use uh, language that's uh, been sort of created and uh, developed through the jazz idiom and uh, has come through folks like Louis Armstrong, Charlie Parker, and um, more of their sort of contemporaries. So. What's that like to roll that out with these guys? Well, it's great. Um, you know, we all have sort of backgrounds that are, you know, intertwined in terms of music, um, but very different in terms of life experience. <laughs> So I think uh, any time you play jazz musicians, one of the things that we uh, are able to take advantage of is um, meeting many different musicians that we play with and experiencing their life experience through music. Um, we all have very different uh, paths that we've taken musically and personally to get to uh, playing in this quartet. And uh, if we play tomorrow night with different folks, there'll be a bunch of different life experience in that bag. So it's really great. I don't want to rat you out, but I know that you uh, were second chair trumpet. Oh, yeah. And he can play the keyboards like that. That's well, very yeah. cool. Well, I haven't played trumpet for many years, but that's true. <laughs> They're a little jealous. Yeah. Okay, Randy, <laughs> um, you could be doing this tonight. You could be doing a wedding dance. How, what do you get out of playing jazz? It's a whole different form. Yeah, these pieces we're playing wouldn't typically be done at a dance, of course. So this is a little more, I guess what you could say, artsy, expressive Contemporary jazz, maybe, but there's there's so many great pieces throughout the decades. But yeah, if I'll play a dance on Sunday night. And I'll, we'll be doing the you know the classic swing tunes and slow tunes and waltzes and tangos and all that. So it's they're different but the same. <laughs> it's music, but different function. Are you recording? Are you what are you, what are, what are you doing with your with this piece of your musical life? I know you also are a band instructor and and deal with middle schoolers. So you're an angel in my category forever, <laughs> just by doing that. <laughs> um, it's recording, not really, other than the big time jazz orchestra, which uh, is a big band that these guys have all been involved with. And our um, we've got two studio CDs with that project. But the only recording we do is pretty more pretty much grassroots type, our own equipment, nothing to be sold, nothing commercially sold. So just playing and enjoying. Do you have any cliff notes for people who are, are new to jazz or unfamiliar with it? You know, how, you know what should we listen for? Is there a, a, a particular drum beat that, that I should be checking on Eric? He's got great rhythm, <laughs> you know? Um, I, would, I think the best message is that jazz is as huge as, if, for, if for anyone who's a rock fan, they would know from 1955 is different than the 60s, and we have even uh, even metal bands would say there's different different types of metal. So jazz is a huge umbrella, 
and uh, it's been around for over a hundred years and it there are many distinct categories uh, but most of them have the creativity of what we call jamming and the ability of players to improvise. That's what we were talking about. You, you can't play a jazz tune the same way twice because right. you're different people. And that's a challenge and we all face that. If, if we take, play Take the A Train nine times this year, you know, my, I like to try to play it differently every time, which is a challenge. Uh, it's a great piece by Duke Ellington that many people know, but and we're all, we need to play it at times, but we try to approach it differently and try to say something new. And that's the challenge of being a creative artistic musician. Okay, one of the challenges for us is how do we find out where you're playing? You know, do we, do we just watch the newspaper or watch the transistor or where do we find out where you're playing? Uh, it's some of that there, I'll see, I, I'm on Facebook, I'm in the phone book. Um, <laughs> I have a website, but it might be hard to remember. Uh, people could Google my name and find me that way. So, and I have a lot. I'm playing like over 100 events a year. It's busy. A lot of private things, but there are some public things. Well, I'll keep an eye out for the big band because I think that's really fun music. And thank you guys for being here tonight. Thanks a lot. Wonderful to hear your jazz music. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. Well, there are lots of options out there for live music and art going on all around the region. So get out and enjoy it and have a great weekend. The last song is yours. Thank you.